Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we are revisiting the Five Color Shrine deck thanks to the recent addition of a Goshintai of Life's Origin in the latest Historic Anthology expansion, a 3-4 legendary enchantment creature that also has the Shrine subtype, which is incredibly relevant for a Shrine deck as we'll find out in a second. And when our commander or another non-token shrine enters the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 1-1 colorless shrine enchantment creature token as depicted on the right. So those also have the shrine subtype. And that's important because all our shrines in our deck, being these legendary enchantments, become more powerful the more shrines we control. Taking Infinite Rage as an example, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, it deals damage to any target equal to the number of shrines we control. So by itself it's only one damage each turn, which is not too exciting. But let's say we play our life's origin first, make a 1-1 shrine, we control two shrines already. Next play Infinite Rage, make another 1-1 token, and now we control four of those shrines, and then Infinite Rage will only get better from there. And then taking a look at the other shrines in our deck, starting with the original Honden cycle, which will trigger at the beginning of our upkeep. Infinite Rage deals damage, Cleansing Fire gains 2 life for each shrine, and Knight's Reach makes the opponent discard, whereas Seeing Winds draws a card for each shrine we control, so nice card draw engine, and Life's Web makes 1-1 spirit tokens for each shrine we control. Next we take a look at the Sanctums, which sometimes trigger at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase, so slightly different timing from the Hondans. We've got Fruitful Harvest for instance, adding X mana of any one color, where X is the number of shrines we control, can give us a great mana boost. Calm Waters gets to draw X cards and then discard a card, where X is the number of shrines we control, so another great one to potentially search up with our Sanctum of All, which we'll get to in a second. We've got Shattered Heights, which can be used as removal by discarding lands or shrines, and then dealing X damage to a creature or planeswalker. Stone Fangs, one of our better win conditions, draining the opponent for X and gaining X life. And then Tranquil Light can tap down opposing creatures and becomes cheaper to activate the more shrines we control. And then circling back to Sanctum of All, this is arguably the most important shrine in our deck, one of each color, and this one triggers at the beginning of our upkeep, so similar to the Hondans, and then lets us search our library and or graveyard for any shrine card and put it straight onto the battlefield. And then if an ability of another shrine we control triggers while we control six or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time, and you'd be surprised at how quickly we can get to six shrines in play if we get our Sanctum of All going, especially alongside our commander. So this can start searching up more and more shrines, and also synergizes very nicely with the Calm Waters and the Fruitful Harvest, as we can potentially search them up and get the benefit of the pre-combat main phase trigger right away, so we can maybe add a bunch of mana or draw a bunch of cards, and not have to wait an entire turn for the Hondans to trigger, for instance. And finally, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty introduced the Shrines in Creature form, which trigger at the beginning of our end step and require a payment of one mana for their abilities to resolve. Lost Wisdom can mill a player, so it can be an alternate win condition. We've got Boundless Vigor adding plus one counters. Ancient Wars can deal damage to players or planeswalkers. Shared Purpose makes 1 1 Spirit tokens similar to Honden of Life's Web. And Hidden Cruelty can destroy a creature with toughness X or less, where X is the number of shrines we control on a 2 2 Death Touch, so a source of repeatable removal. So these are all the shrines, I want to get as many of them in play as possible, but ideally we just find a Sanctum of All, which can find all the other shrines in our deck. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we do need some ramp and mana fixing, which is this first category, including Chronicler of Worship from Alchemy, which can even find a shrine when it enters a battlefield, so one of the better two mana ramp cards in our deck. Explore and Gross Spiral draw a card and put an additional land into play, Into the North can find one of our Snow Basics, Good Paradise Druid, another ramp creature. Sanctum Weaver, probably the best 2-mana ramp card if it survives. Tapping to add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of enchantments we control, itself being an enchantment, and also counting the 1-1 shrine tokens from our commander, so that can quickly get out of hand. Wolf Willow Haven, an enchantment itself, making additional green mana. Naturalist gives her enchantments a 1-mana discount. And then we've got some 2-mana ramp artifacts, with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone and Ornithopter of Paradise. We've got Cultivate at 3 mana, finding 2 basics. Fabora Elder can be quite synergistic with our various colored shrines, as it will potentially tap for 5 mana if we get all 5 colors in play. 
Get key to the archive, letting us draft from the spellbook, potentially finding powerful cards like Time Warp and Mirari's Wake, doubling the mana from our lands. Then we've got a bit of interaction, including efficient removal like Source to Plowshares, Wash Away to counter opposing commanders, Thought Seize as cheap hand disruption, and then more spot removal with Heartless Act, D Spark, and Vanishing Verse. We've got some enchantments that can be used as removal, like Banishing Light and Borrowed Time. Binding can destroy an opposing non-land permanent, and then Rampus on the second chapter, finding any of our forests, which also include our various trial lands, which have the forest subtype, taking a look at cards like Proving Ground, for instance, so that's also quite nice. And then we also have the Kami War as another powerful curve topper that can help us take over the game. And the Meathook Massacre, a sweeper in enchantment form, kind of nerfed by alchemy, but still quite powerful. It's even legendary, so we can even find it with one of our card draw engines, namely Captain Cisse, which can tap to search our library for any legendary card and put it into our hand. So this can find all our shrines, which are legendary, and some cards like Meathook Massacre as well. And our other card draw engines include Sithis, Enchantress's Presence and Seder Enchanter, drawing whenever we cast an enchantment, so works even if the opponent counters our enchantment. But Sedescent Champion might be even better now that we have Life's Origin as commander, as this draws whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, so it also counts the 1 1 shrine tokens we get, and then also picks up plus 1 counters. And then Immortal Sun, another great card draw engine that can shut down all planeswalkers, as we don't have any ourselves, and also gives our spells a 1 mana discount in addition to pumping up our creatures. And then we also have a few tutor effects to help us find our Sanctum of All, as it's such an important part of our game plan, so having ways to find it is quite useful. And those include Idyllic Tutor, which can find any enchantment to put into our hand, we've got Moonblast Cleric, which will put it on top of our deck, we've got Search for Glory, which can find any legendary card, Saga, or Snow card, so it can even find our basic lands if we just need to hit our land drops, and then the Shrine Steward can find any shrine and put it into our hand as well. And then finally we've got some more utility cards, including Destiny Spinner to make our enchantments uncounterable, great against blue decks. We've got Sterling Grove, which will give our enchantments Shroud, protecting them from spot removal. It can also be Sacrificed to potentially search up our Sanctum of Vault, for instance, so it also counts as a tutor effect. And then a Time Warp to take an extra turn, also very powerful if we have a few shrines in play. And then our mana base has 42 lands total, including one of each snow-covered basic, all 10 of the tri lands, including the new ones from Streets of New Capenna. We've got Command Tower, of course, and then our Shock Lands, our Innistrad Dual Lands, which come into play untapped in the late game, and then a couple pathways to round out our mana base. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Ayara, Mono Black. And our hand's quite fair, but powerful, I would say, with a turn 3 Banishing Lights. Turn for either Sanctum or Life's Origin and take it from there. So hopefully our opponent's not off to a blazing fast start. Turn to Lassata Reaver is acceptable. And a Guardian Idol is nice. So now we can skip Banishing Light, go straight to Life's Origin or Calm Waters. Mono Black's gonna have quite a bit of removal, so don't expect Life's Origin to stick around. So could see the advantage of playing the card draw engine first. Although Life's Origin making a shrine makes our Calm Waters better once we do eventually play it. So maybe that's still fine. And then next turn... We'll have access to 5 mana, could play Life's Web. Or just go Sanctum plus Tapland, setting up for Banishing Light alongside Seder Enchanter. Right, play Crafter, not the end of the world, as we can just sacrifice for 1-1. One, one. So Life's Origin has kind of built-in protection against Edict effects, making us sacrifice a creature. And yeah, we'll stick to the plan, Sanctum plus Tapland. Between the two, don't think it matters too much. And pass it back. It's gonna be 5 mana for a Witch of the Moors. 
That card's quite scary alongside Ayara. So we'll have to Banishing Lights, the Witch most likely. For now, just sacrifice our shrine. So once again, saved by the 1-1. One, one. Get to draw two and discard. So still netting an extra card. And Faber Elder could also be tempting here. Now that we have a card draw engine, we just need more mana. So I'll get rid of one of the Triomes. And then instead of going Enchanter, Banishing Light, I think we'll go Faber Elder plus Banishing Light instead. Now that won't make any additional 1-1 tokens to protect us from another Edict effect, but hopefully the opponent's out. And then next turn we can potentially play a couple of Shrines. Put on connect activate Ayara, so we don't actually exile the Witch in case they can get it back from the graveyard, and of course draw a card in the process. Six mana, what's next? It's gonna be a Massacre Girl. Okay, it doesn't kill anything until I guess they sacrifice something to Ayara, and then it's probably gonna wipe the entire board. Wow, interesting, our opponent did not use Ayara. Yeah, that plus Massacre Girl could have basically wiped the board. So I'm glad they didn't. For now, Triumph can go. And what's next? Probably Seder Enchanter alongside Stone Fangs. We'll start here. See what we pick up, and that'll add one more color for Fabero. And then we can even play our Life's Web afterwards. Don't think I'm interested in attacking. So I'll do it this way in case we draw another tap land. Ooh, Thoughtseize can even play it here. That worked out. See what else they have. And Call of the Death Dweller, probably scarier than Blight Priest. As we'll start gaining a life of Stone Fangs now, so I'm not afraid of getting drained to death. And then plenty of 1 1 tokens on the way as well. So there's the Black Priest. And we get to untap and draw a ton of cards. So Massacre Girl gets in for four. Can probably still afford to take it. Alrighty. Make six tokens. Drain them for six. Draw six cards. We're in business. Alrighty, so what do we get rid of? Probably don't need Ornithopter anymore. Can start gaining more life with Cleansing Fire. Didn't think we need to prioritize the Tessin Champion, as we have plenty of cards already. Maybe play Key in case we hit a Time Warp. Although may not be able to cast it here. And we hit uh, D Spark, I guess. Get rid of a land. And then I can D Spark plus play a Destiny Spinner. That looks fine. Although, I guess they can once again sacrifice to Ayara. So the timing's not perfect, but it's probably still okay. See what we draw off Seder Enchanter first. Another Honden. Alright, they can draw their card with Ayara, that's fine. Okay, so as the dust settles, we've got a ton of 1-1 tokens. 
ton of shrines. But our opponent does have a couple of cards in hand here. Senchmore Witch can make more tokens as well. And those also synergize with Blight Priest to potentially drain us. And a Flashback Marauder making a sacrifice. So plenty of sacrifice effects from the opponent's deck. Can just get rid of a 1-1. And these are just spirits and not actual shrine enchantments, so the shrines are a lot more valuable. Ayara draws. And our opponent concedes, they're just too far behind here, as our shrines are about to take over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing the True Sword Paladin, so an aura deck. And our hand's missing some ramp and some shrines, so I don't think I'm interested in keeping even though we have quite a bit of interaction. All right, this I can try. Turn to Sithis. Search for glory to maybe get our Sanctum of All. Bronzehide Lion, so... This can potentially gain Indestructible. I'll save for protection. Okay, picked up Sanctum Weaver, which I typically prefer playing before Sithis, if I have both, just to develop our mana. Kind of depends on the situation, since we wouldn't mind drawing a land here. Playing out Boseju, which could have been used as removal. So they probably don't have too many more lands in hand. And we'll take three. Okay, land is excellence, so... Could just go for Sithis, have three mana, and then search for glory. I like that idea. And get our Sanctum of All. Although I wouldn't be able to quite play it next turn, as we need one more color. But I think it's still worth it. Can maybe play our commander first, and then still maybe keep up Swords to Plowshares, although the opponent might be able to protect with Alsade. Alright, Donita, discounting Aura and Equipment spells. Take three more. Okay, land's good, although still doesn't cast Sanctum of All, so I think we stick to the plan of playing our commander. And let's see, the Shrine is an enchantment creature, so then we can still play Hondon afterwards if we'd like. Yeah, that seems good. Make another Shrine token. And then next turn we should be able to play Sanctum of All. Knight of Autumn blows up our commander, perhaps. Or goes for the Knight's Reach. Opponent does not want to discard. Well, at least they had to use an answer to Sanctum of All, which we can now play. So let's see, how do we want to tap our Sanctum Weaver? Is there any way we can Sanctum of All and Time Warp? Might be a little challenging. So, can also activate our Life's Origin. Close call. I guess we want to prioritize Sanctum of All. And then we can maybe play our Stone Fangs as well. Sure. Immortal Sun. Could be nice. Alright. So plenty of Shrine Tokens. Just gonna hang back. And then Stone Fangs can almost drain the opponent to death here. All that Glitters is gonna add up quickly. Although we can just chum block with a Shrine token. And since they're colorless, our opponent cannot use the Alsei to maybe give protection from green to attack past our blockers. Sanctum of All goes for Library. And how about some card draw with Calm Waters? Life's Origin triggers again. And this is getting out of hand. Put 
one is pretty much already dead, and now we can just take an extra turn with Time Warp, and that should seal the deal. So pretty ridiculous stuff. Draw 10 more, why not? And yep, take an extra turn. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Sentinel Worm. So up against Team or Dragons. Our hand has potential. Couple Triumphs for fixing. And a bit of ramp with uh, Ornithopter. Tutor can maybe find our Sanctum of All, which can help us take over. So for now, just a tap land. Well, plenty of Tutor effects to get Sanctum of All. What do we want to play first? Search for Glory can also get a Snow Land if we're in a pinch. So maybe I Tutor now, get Sanctum of All as opposed to playing Ornithopter. And get our five color shrine, if we can find it. There it is. And then now maybe go for Ornithopter since we drew a land, otherwise I would have played Search for Glory. And then we still keep up Source to Plowshares. Opponent's got a Dragon Turtle. Okay. So, that's gonna make it so our creature does not untap during our next untap step, essentially preventing it from ramping, so not much I can do about it even if I Swords. Okay, drew an untapped land, so we can still play our Sanctum, which is probably the play, even though the opponent might have a Counterspell in hand. Now we can still use our commander to eventually get it back from the graveyard. As our opponent plays key to the archive. Now because of wards we won't be able to play our commander and swords their commander next turn. So might want to take a different approach. Maybe if we draw an untapped land we can still do both and we did. Alright then it's probably worth it. Could also play stone fangs. I guess that's also reasonable, make an extra shrine right away. And then if they play a different dragon we can still swords. And if not I'll just do it in my turn. Alright, there's a sentinel worm, that resolves. And it's unlikely for them to play another dragon for one or two mana. Okay, so if I activate my commander to get our Sanctum back, I wouldn't be able to Swords Sentinel Worm, so that seems too risky. So instead I can maybe play Cleansing Fire and then still Swords. Yeah, that seems fine. Start getting some life back. And then I can maybe Swords in response to the opponent casting a Dragon, because it's on ETB and not on Cast. And yeah, definitely want to avoid the opponent getting two Glory Bringers. Although one's still going to be quite effective taking out our commander. Spitflame our commander in response, that's fine. So now we won't be able to get back Sanctum of All just yet. Glorybringer exerting on Ornithopter. And we'll take seven. We'll gain that life back pretty quickly. As we gain ten. And drain the opponent for five. Banishing Light, maybe an answer to key. Or we can just replay our commander and pass. And then next turn maybe get Sanctum of All back. Yeah, that seems fine. Can attack with my shrines. So even without our Sanctum of All, 
All these extra tokens are adding up with our stone fangs and cleansing fire. And there's Sentinel Worm again. Get back Spitflame. Although I guess they didn't leave up a red. Okay. And now we have a lot of options. Can activate my commander, get back Sanctum of All. But yeah, even just answering the opponent's Sentinel Worm here with a Banishing Light puts us in a pretty great spot at 53 life with all these extra shrines pumping up our various enchantments and our opponent already at 12, so Stone Fangs was gonna kill them pretty quickly. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and this is the mirror match, so having a turn to ramp spell is quite important. And yet this hand could work with Captain Cisse finding additional shrines. So we'll need to find some more lands along the way, but we can explore into Captain Cisse for now. Assuming we can find a fourth land. Opponent leading with a Savai Triome. And another tri land here with the headquarters and a Sanctum of Tranquil Light. Okay, gonna hang on to Binding to answer a more important shrine. And yeah, get Captain Cisse going. Can maybe get to Calm Waters next turn and play it. Best case scenario, draw either a black or red land and then we can play Sanctum of All. It's gonna be a Gift of Paradise for Ramp. Okay. A little bit hesitant to play Sanctum Weaver in case there's a Sweeper, which your opponent already kind of wants to play to get rid of Captain Cisse. So I'm just gonna get our Sanctum of Calm Waters, as we mentioned, and play that for now. And hopefully find some more lands with it next turn. Just a tap land and a commander here making a 1-1 one -one shrine. Pick up Arcane Signet and what to discard. Immortal Sun might be a little slow to get going here, so I could see getting rid of that. Even though Sanctum Weaver can easily help us ramp it out. And now that the opponent committed their commander, I'm less concerned about removal, or at least a sweeper, clearing our board. Maybe I do get rid of Immortal Sun since Calm Waters has our card draw covered. And then... Might want to just get a cheaper shrine while we develop our mana here. But we can activate this in the opponent's turn as well. Otherwise I might have wanted to get my own copy of Tranquil Light to play right now. But just in case they can answer Captain CC, I might want to get Sanctum of All. So this is going to be a Sithis. And Tranquil Light to tap down CC. Can activate it and get Sanctum of All. Okay, that worked out. And discard maybe Holden of Life's Web. And so how much mana are we working with here? If I play Sanctum of All, Sanctum Weaver will make 3 mana, plus one's 4. So I guess we could play Binding, destroying the opponent's commander. That sounds reasonable. Alternatively, can play Life's Origin, which will make an enchantment, but then I wouldn't be able to play Sanctum of All. But then Weaver can make even more mana, potentially. Now let's try this. Binding destroy Life's Origin, I think, over Sithis, but that's also a close call. And then I can activate Captain in the opponent's turn. And now that we have a huge mana advantage thanks to Sanctum Weaver, we can sort of combo off with our Life's Origin, making a ton of Shrine Tokens. As our opponent just replays their own Life's Origin. So now I might want to just get the cheapest Shrine with Captain as a way to enable Life's Origin. That seems fine to me. Meat Hook Massacre also an option. Can cast it for 
x equals 1 just to clear the opponent's shrines, although we can still do that later. So let's just get the 1 mana Tranquil Light. And then search our library, unless we want to get Life's Web, which I don't think is the case. And we want more card draw. Never a bad idea. Can go for discard, since the opponent is still holding quite a few cards here. Search for forest, can get one of our tri lands. So let's make it tap for red mana at the very least. And draw. Probably don't need basic mountain. And uh, step one is probably playing life's origin. Just being somewhat careful how we tap our mana, but this should work. Then Tranquil Lights. And now our Sanctum Weaver making 10 mana. Sounds good. Activate Captain Cisse. And what do we want to get? Alright, I guess that's enough to prompt a concession opponent pretty far behind, mostly thanks to the mana advantage from Sanctum Weaver and the card advantage from Captain, allowing us to pretty much search any shrine we want. And then, yeah, we can maybe key to the archive and find a powerful spellbook card to take over if we hit a time warp, for instance, or maybe even get a Meat Hook Massacre if we really need to. So the world is our oyster. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Angrath, Black Rat, Discard, presumably, and our hand seems fine. Maybe a few too many pathways, so we might need more actual dual lands to fix our mana. But turn to Explore, and then hopefully find another land soon. There we go. Play a Triome, and now we should have our color sorted. Okay, so we can play a 4 mana shrine here, and which one do we go for? Kind of liking the Sanctum of Calm Waters first, just to establish our card draw engine. Not too many ways for red-black to get rid of our enchantments. And then Life's Origin can let us draw quite a bit by making that extra 1-1 one -one token. Bones going for a light up this stage, finding... Eldritch Pact, which they won't be able to cast, and a Lightning Bolt. And what do we get rid of? Maybe Vanishing Verse, even though it's our only interactive spell, just because it doesn't answer Angrath. And then, for now, maybe just go for the most mana efficient play, which is Honden of Life's Web. I can see that. And then next turn we can maybe go Life's Origin plus Lost Wisdom and start making those Shrine Tokens. So we could see a Lightning Bolt to the face, so go blank instead, okay. So in that case, probably get rid of Knight's Reach and the land. Could also get rid of Lost Wisdom, just go for Life's Origin plus a Tap Land next turn, but if we draw an Untap Land, I think the upside here is pretty high. Shrines also get exiled, so we won't be able to get them back with our Sanctum. Alright, perfect. And then we get to draw as well, get rid of probably a land. Sure. Although, can maybe use the extra black source. Life's Origin, plus kind of liking Lost Wisdom here. And hope there's no Sweeper. Just an Angrath. Can empty out our hand or maybe kill Lost Wisdom. Okay, that's fine. Get to untap and make six tokens and draw a whole bunch of cards. And can probably discard one of our tap lands. I'm liking Mirari's Wake into... Binding the Old Gods, 
if we can tap our mana properly, which is a lot to ask of the auto tapper, to be fair. So something like this should work. Get rid of Angrath. And go face. Could have also tried to keep some mana around to maybe mill the opponents, although that doesn't seem too useful. Can maybe activate our life's origin to get back our boundless vigor. And our opponent explodes, yeah. Life's origin kind of turbocharging some of our shrines here. On to the next one. Alrighty, we're on the draw, facing a Merfolk deck, presumably. And our hand's keepable, mainly thanks to Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, adding extra mana. And get a Deathcap Glade going so we can play turn 2 Destiny Spinner. And our opponent's deck could easily have some counter spells, so this is a useful ability to have access to. Although I imagine we'll see some Merfolk. And a Silvergill, one of the better ones, gets to draw a card, revealing Benthic Biomancer. So play Destiny Spinner, next turn Sanctum, which can help us ramp into a Mirari's Wake, which would be awesome. There's a Biomancer we knew about. And let's get our Fruitful Harvest down. Uncounterable. And we'll stay back. So not the most efficient turn for the opponent there. Time for the commander. Indestructible. So Heartless Act's not going to be incredibly useful. Let's make some blue mana. And then... Probably just go for our commander here. Play a tap land. Once again uncounterable. And the extra shrines will make a lot of mana thanks to Fruitful Harvest. So next turn we can get maybe a Mirari's Wake down to make even more mana. Tempest Caller is going to tamp down our team to get in an attack. So their commander gets to draw. Okay, down to 15 we go. Land is good. So what color do we add? Probably blue once again. And then I could play Mirari's Wake. And still have the mana for Immortal Sun afterwards. That sounds good. Or we could Time Warp, take an extra turn. Opponent with a Pact of Negation, but our enchantment is still uncounterable, so it's not actually going to work. And our opponent's still going to have to pay 5 mana next turn. So maybe they realize their mistake or Destiny Spinner just too much for them to handle. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing another Sentinel Worm deck. And what do we think of this hand? Turn to Idols, nice. We've got the green for our commander. Lacking a bit in the interaction department, perhaps, but I'll give it a try. Might want to actually play Knight's Reach as soon as possible. Or we could play our commander first, I suppose. So maybe keep this to play it on red. Turn one Lunar Elves is a nice start. Even had the untapped green source to play it, so... Opponent could already cast their commander next turn. Thoughtseize, not a bad pickup, but I think we still want to play our life's origin, and then next turn we can maybe double spell Knight's Reach and Thoughtseize. Alright, it's going to be an orb to give their dragons haste. And a Garrix Uprising, down to two cards in hand. So let's have a look with Thoughtseize, and then we can reevaluate. Okay, Ancient Copper Dragon. Probably don't want that to hit us. And that Intervention doesn't do anything at the moment. 
And then... Thinking Knight's Reach to start emptying their hand even further. Especially with Garruk's Uprising refreshing their hand. But Life's Origin can attack, and I suppose the 1-1 as well. So we're not out of the woods yet, but taking that Copper Dragon, definitely a big deal. As we would have been staring down a lot of treasure tokens. So this is going to be a hasty Sentinel Worm, gaining life off the Nurture, drawing a card off Uprising. But at least we've got our Knight's Reach to empty the opponent's hand. And we've got a few flyers to potentially chump with if needed. Swords is missing white mana, so we can get our Ornithopter down to help with that. And then Lost Wisdom, I guess, we can play as well. And attack with probably everyone. And then do I want to mill my opponent's... There are downsides if your opponent has, like, a dragon fire they can get back, but overall probably fine to start milling in case that turns into our win condition. Okay, Silver Dragon, Lathless gone. Opponent's gonna go digging with Orb, so that's a good sign. And they didn't seem to have found anything. So yeah, opponent's on empty. We are taking 6 a turn, but now we can use our Ornithopter to cast Swords. Missing a card draw engine. So that's the main problem, but Hidden Cruelty can also start taking out the opponent's creatures one by one. So we'll start here, make a shrine, can attack with probably everyone that can attack. And still gonna run this out instead of cycling it. And then end of turn, can pay for both shrines. Mill the opponents, and take out Nurture. Unless we can take out the Worm, which we do have enough shrines, but we wouldn't be able to pay for Ward, which also helps against abilities, so... Can try it next turn. Alright, so if they have a dragon here, we could still die, thanks to haste, but yeah, I'll take 6 down to 3. And then now we can take out Sentinel Worm and keep up swords for the future. Opponent's gonna have to discard their territory, so there wasn't really a reason for them to hold it. Okay, so 3 mana to target Worm, and then I guess they wouldn't be able to replay it all that easily, so it might be fine to play Shattered Heights as well. Attack with all that can attack. Opponent takes it. And we can decline the Lost Wisdom, but I'll pay for Hidden Cruelty. And keep Ornithopter back so we have an extra flying blocker just in case. We can cast our swords as well. Okay, pass it back. Alright, I guess our opponent can replay their commander here. And we're gonna have to chump if we want to survive. Opponent draws up Uprising, but at least we'll discard that one. So it could have been avoided by just swordsing the Lanor Elves. But that's okay, we'll just jump here, keep Ornithopter, go to 1, and then uh, we can kill the Sentinel Worm once again, but our opponent's also just tearing down lethal from all the 1-1 tokens. So yeah, Knight's Reach did a lot of work, a timely thought seize, as we take an old Gnawbone here as well. And yeah, the 1-1 beatdown got the job done, so despite not having one of our card draw shrines, we still managed to kill with damage onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Turgrid, Mono Black, Discard. And having some early ramp is nice. Missing a bit of a card draw engine or a way to take over the late game, 
but for now I'm happy just being able to ramp, empty my hand quickly so the discard effects don't impact us too much. Divest, gonna have a look. Can take away Guardian Idol as the only target. Okay, can explore or play Haven. Opponent's gonna make us discard next turn most likely. I guess I would rather draw and see what else we're working with. Okay. Play that tapped. Can play our commander next turn. Which seems fine. No need to keep up wash away. As they're pretty far from casting their commander. Drex and Arena for card draw. So yeah, the opponent's favored in the late game here. Can play this on blue, so we can play this for double blue if needed. Although, might need the white eventually, also to activate our own commander. So let's try that instead. Play Honden, and then we keep up Wash Away Heartless Act. Or I can Haven first. Play Honden and still keep up at least Wash Away, although probably won't be necessary here. So we can try and apply a bit of pressure. Nothing to get back with our commander. Brugabog exiling our graveyard as well, for what it's worth. Okay. Infinite Rage starts adding up pretty quickly too here. Can play key and still have both instants available. And time warp sounds lovely. Get rid of probably Heartless Acts. Although if they're gonna play their commander, it doesn't matter too much. I guess Heartless Act is a bit more flexible. Yeah, it's close. Opponent's down to 10. Could see wanting the actual counter spell if our opponent doesn't end up playing their commander. Didn't have the double blue up to counter extinction event, but that's okay. Their opponent at 9. Can play Setessen Champion and have 5 mana left over. Keep up Wash Away. Alright, looks like our opponent has seen enough already. Honden, I guess, just close enough to killing them, especially with Phyrexian Arena, taking one extra damage each turn, maybe missing a way to gain life. Just casting a Time Warp here also starts adding up with Honden, so we weren't in a bad spot, but game wasn't over just yet. Okay, time for another mirror match, and we're on the play with quite a bit of ramp. Search for glory to find Sanctum of All, so I'll give it a shot. And then play one of our tap lands. Ooh, we even found the new Chronicler of Worship, which is pretty decent, so can give that a shot. And we found a Stone Fangs off of it, getting a 1 mana discount as well. Okay, so we have options, but kind of liking Mind Stone into Explore, and then might still draw land afterwards to play Stone Fangs. Could also play our life's origin, but I kind of like ramping first. Alright, perfect. So, I guess, yeah, just play a stone fangs for one mana, or we can keep it to make extra shrines with life's origin, which I also don't hate. And get in for one. Chromatic Lantern for fixing from the opponents. Can search for glory, Sanctum of All. Let's see if we play Life's Origin, we can still search for glory. So maybe that's the way to go. And then we might be able to even take an extra turn to benefit from our shrines being in play. Opponent's got 5 mana. Honden of Seeing Winds can be taken out by Binding. 
can play Sanctum of All and then still play maybe a Guardian Idol. And even if they take out our Sanctum here, we can still get it back with our commander. And our opponent knows how important this card is and scoops it up. Alright, so we get to see our updated 5-color Shrine's deck in action. And Life's Origin certainly increases the power level of the deck dramatically, giving you a ton of synergy with the other Shrines, a nice Mana Sink and just another win condition, just making a whole bunch of 1-1 tokens that can also potentially protect your commander from incoming damage or Edict effects, so it kind of does it all. And uh, yeah, overall, the type of deck that can snowball very quickly, so either you need to be a very aggressive deck to beat it, or maybe a controlling deck that has answers to a whole bunch of enchantments in play. So those are certainly ways to potentially beat the 5 color Shrines deck, but if it gets off to a quick start and gets to enable its game plan, it's a very hard deck to beat. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.